time from us for us and sir it has always been a pleasure to hear you speak we are lucky to have again got this opportunity professor singh is a professor of mathematics he served as the 21st vice chancellor of the university of delhi he is a distinguished fellow of hat space at imperial college london and has been an adjunct professor of mathematics at the university of houston for his services to the nation he was conferred with the padma shri which is the fourth highest civilian award awarded by the government of india professor singh started his career as lecturer at the prestigious saint stephen's college in 1981 thereafter he joined department of mathematics university of delhi in 1987 He served as the director of South Campus from 2005 to 2010. He officiated briefly as the Pro Vice Chancellor of the Delhi University before being in, appointed as the Vice Chancellor on 29th October 2010. His area of specializations include functional analysis, operator theory, and harmonic analysis. He is noted for being. instrumental in setting up of the cluster innovation center at the university of delhi an interdisciplinary first of its kind research center particularly promoting undergraduate research he also popularized the concept of innovation as credit i welcome you again sir you. professor singh is going to speak on the topic demystifying the corona virus good news for india before we start with the session i invite our principal dr gyantosh kumar cha to officially welcome professor singh adarniya uh, professor dinesh singh pur kulpati delhi vishwavidyalay sabhi hamare pratibhagi mitra main atmaram sanatan dharm college ki or se sir ka is webinar aur live session mein हार्दिक स्वागत और हार्दिक अभिनंदन करता हूं आ, हमारे कॉलेज के साथ सर का ऐसा लगाव है कि हर संकट के दौर रहे हो या सामान्य जीवन रहा हो हमेशा उनका सहयोग समर्थन और उनका मार्गदर्शन हम लोगों को प्राप्त होता रहा है और यही वजह है कि आज इस लॉकडाउन और कोरोना महामारी के समय में भी सर का सानिध्य हमको इस रूप में प्राप्त हो रहा है सर इसके लिए मैं पूरे कॉलेज परिवार की ओर से आपका आभार व्यक्त करना चाहता हूं और आप यह आश्वासन देना चाहता हूं आपको कि आपके बताए हुए दिशा निर्देशों के आधार पर ही हम लोग आगे बढ़ रहे हैं डॉक्टर विनीता ने कुछ बातें आपके बारे में कही है मैं दो बातों का जिक्र करना जरूर चाहूंगा एक तो आपके समय में एक कार्यक्रम की शुरुआत अंतर्ध्वनि की शुरुआत हुई थी विश्वविद्यालय में जिसको आप इनर बीट इनर ड्रम बीट आप कहा करते हैं मैं ऐसा मानता हूं कि आज इस समय में जहां सब लोग अपने अपने घरों में बंद हैं और एकाकी जीवन व्यतीत कर रहे हैं उस समय उस अंतर्ध्वनि को जागृत करने और अंतर्ध्वनि को अपने अपनी अंतरात्मा में सुनने का अवसर आ गया है और मैं समझता हूं कि इस अंतर्ध्वनि को जागृत करने के लिए आपसे बेहतर व्यक्ति उत्प्रेरक और प्रेरक के रूप में हमारे बीच में नहीं हो सकता था इसलिए आपने हम सबको समय दिया समय देकर किताब किया इसके लिए मैं आपका आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ दूसरी बात आपके समय में एक ज्ञानोदय ट्रेन चला करती थी जिसके माध्यम से बच्चों और शिक्षकों को ज्ञान के कई अनुभव प्राप्त करने का अवसर मिलता था वो अवसर तो नहीं है लेकिन इस लाइव एक्सपीरियंस के द्वारा आपके वो तमाम अनुभव आज हम सबसे और जो पूरी दुनिया में या पूरे भारत में जो दर्शक इस प्रोग्राम को देखेंगे उन सबसे साझा होने का अवसर मिलेगा कोरोना महामारी के समय में आपने जो समय दिया इस लॉकडाउन के संकट की घड़ी में और जिस तरह से इस विषय पर 
डिमिस्टिफाइंग कोरोना वायरस गुड न्यूज गुड न्यूज फॉर इंडिया अपने वक्तव्य के माध्यम से कई लोग इस समय में कई तरह की गंदगियों और कई तरह की हिंसाओं के शिकार हो रहे हैं तनाव से गुजर रहे हैं मुझे लगता है कि इस विषय पर आपका व्याख्यान निश्चित रूप से हम सबके लिए प्रेरणादायक सिद्ध होगा सर पुनः मैं कॉलेज की ओर से आपका आभार व्यक्त करता हूं, बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और आपसे निवेदन करना चाहता हूं कि आप विषय पर अपना वक्तव्य प्रारंभ करें थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच आई एम डीपली ग्रेटफुल टू यू फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड इट इज ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर टू बी कनेक्टेड विद कॉलेज I am proud of what has happened in your college, and I expect even greater things will keep happening in the college. I enjoy every visit to your college, and I also look forward to the annual plays that your college produces. I think this is the direction all colleges should take. And once again, I am looking forward to this interaction that we will have today. I deliberately chose this topic of. business of demystifying the corona virus issue wherever i have interacted in india and i have done this at length with many people institutions individuals even organizations i find two things i notice that people tend to be a little worried people tend to be a little tense people tend to be a little mystified about what is this virus what kind of ramifications will it have for india where will it take the country and i thought that if i can acquaint myself a little bit with the virus and whatever goes around the issue of the virus it might be useful for others if i can explain some of these things and that's the purpose by today's interaction with here is the college i just want to tell you something i have asked this question of many people a few days ago i was also talking to a bunch of mathematics school teachers of delhi on a web and i asked them how would you estimate the probability of someone catching the virus in india and unfortunately even though all the teachers were very concerned about the virus none of them had any idea how to calculate the probability of anyone getting the virus well here's a simple way of doing it and that will help you understand what's really going on so you know i, I have been following what the indian council of medical research has been doing with the virus and how it's tackling the issue of the virus in india and they are working very hard so some weeks ago about i think 3 weeks ago maybe 4 weeks ago they conducted a test by taking a random population of more than 15000 people so they randomly picked more than 15000 people when i say random it means you don't have any preconceived notion on who you will bring into the group so let them come from every possible source in a random not well thought out manner and then they tested all of them so there were more than 15000 people and about 500 were found to be positive so in a large size of more than 15000 500 were found to be positive that gives you a probability of 0.04 so that's a pretty low probability very low but let me tell you something they probably tested a sample from a city maybe delhi if they were to include a much larger sample take my word for it the probability will go down significantly significantly because i conducted some simple experiments twice i picked random samples of just a thousand each but from different parts of the country and randomly picked i was not performing any tests but what i did was i asked each one of these members in my sample if they had personal information of anyone who had contracted the virus just personal information not through the web 
not through the media, not through television or newspaper, through your personal knowledge. So in your circle of friends, relatives, workers, so on and so forth, if you have any knowledge. And twice I did this with samples of 1,000 people each. And my probability was way below the ICMR probability because now I had taken people from rural areas, city areas, at different strata of socioeconomic groups, and I tried to really make it wide. But these are very crude experiments, yet it gives you a very good idea that the infection rate in India is really very, very low. There are other ways of estimating this without trying to be too scientific or too mathematical. I have not yet come across any situation in any hospital where the beds are completely occupied and the hospital is bursting with patients. If you look at what happened in New York, if you look at what happened in Italy, if you look at what happened in France, if you look at what happened in Spain, and even in Great Britain, you will find that the hospitals were bursting with patients. I have not yet come across a single situation in India where I find that our hospitals are bursting with patients. That is also a measure that the infection rate in India is very, very low. But you know, Gyantosh, I want you to recognize something because this is something that your teachers, not just of mathematics, but any discipline, particularly economics or statistics or even physics, they can perform these simple experiments on the web. So, you know, what I did was I picked up all the data of number of infections in France, what age group, who got infected, the deaths in France, what age group, how many people died. I did that with Italy, I did that with France, I did that with the United States, I did that with China. All this data is available on the web. And you know what I found? That a slightly younger age group, the infection rate is higher. So people in the age group of 25 to 45 tend to be more infected than other age groups. And there's a simple reason for that, because they move around much more. So they mix more, they were more active physically, so they got infected more. But the death rate really affects only people who are above 70, in fact, really above 80. That's when more people die. At the younger age groups, very few people have died, very few. And who are the people who have largely died? It's not clear if it's the virus that is causing the death. Because most of them were either suffering from severe heart disease, kidney problems, high blood pressure, so on and so forth. Diabetes. So there is no clear understanding that a virus directly causes this death. And therefore, I understood one thing. That in India, our average age is really low. You know, people below the age of 55 constitute 75% or 80% of the population. It is all there on the web. You can check up. I also looked at the data for Iran. Unlike France, Italy, etc., Iran does not have very good medical facilities. It does not have the best of medical facilities. Economically, it is suffering like anything. They did not even practice any lockdowns. And yet the death rate in Iran came down and became very low, very fast. And do you know why? Because Iran also has a very young population. So this disease doesn't cause deaths in young people. And India has a large young population. So India's major objective has been to keep the slightly older people well protected. The lockdown has really worked there. That is why, that's one of the reasons why in India the death rates are really low. There are many other things I think people should know about the virus that will demystify the so-called fear that people have about the virus. There is really nothing like that. And I think this is a good point. So, you know, I began to read all kinds of other data that was coming from the web. Long ago, when the virus had just finished work, you know, wreaking havoc in China, there's a Nobel laureate called Michael Levitt. He issued a statement. He said, I've been looking at the data for China and I've looked at the data for the Diamond Princess. 
The Diamond Princess was a cruise ship in which there were more than 3,000 odd passengers and the virus had reached there. Most of the passengers were elderly people. They were elderly people, not young. And it affected, I can't remember the exact figure, maybe 700 odd people were infected by the virus. This is a closed environment. So the virus had a free run through the air conditioning system. Otherwise, within 3,000 people on a ship, everybody gets to somehow meet or interact with everybody all the time. About 700. And you know, only 12 people died. Out of this 3,500 or so passengers, only 12 people died. And they were old people. They had other problems. So Michael Levitt said that this virus has a self-limiting nature. It will not go on indefinitely. And all those mathematical models that were made that there will be exponential infection and India will have millions of people who will get infected, they're crazy. Even though I'm a mathematician, they are stupid mathematical models and I'm willing to put my reputation as a mathematician behind this statement that these are crazy models. They should never have been put forward like that because they cannot model a large country like India. There are other reasons why I tell you that we should be less concerned. I'm not asking you to go out in the streets and start hugging people. That's not my implication. But let us not fear this virus so much. There are many other reasons why India will be much better off than most countries. And I want all of us to understand this and recognize this. So, you know, at the University of Texas at Houston, there is a very famous medical center, one of the best in the world. As chance would have it, because I hold a position in Houston, I was there in January this year, just three months ago. Four scientists just decided to pick up data on the coronavirus, which is available freely on the web. I, Gyanatosh, you must recognize that all this data is available on the web. We don't have to go looking for it. We don't have to take anyone's permission. And these are good exercises for your faculty and your students, particularly at this point in time. It's a good way of analyzing data in simple ways. So what did these four scientists do? They looked at 178 countries that have the coronavirus. They analyzed the data for all 178 countries. They looked at which countries have what kind of infection rates, which countries have what kind of deaths and so on. And in this list, they found that all the countries that have very low deaths, very low deaths, like India. India has about 800, 900 deaths at this point in time, which is really low. After six, seven weeks of the virus, we have only 900 deaths. New York used to have more than 1,000 deaths every day. So you can even understand that. I'll come to that point in a while. But these four scientists looked at data for all these countries and then they found that those countries that had a very low death rate, all of them had one thing in common, except for Germany or one or two countries where for other reasons the death rate was low. Apart from that, all the countries where the deaths were low had one thing in common. All of them had a strong BCD vaccination program. All of them. So they looked at Ireland. Ireland has a very low death rate. Ireland has a strong BCD vaccination program. Ireland is right next door to Great Britain. Ireland has strong connections with Britain. People come and go all the time. Yet Ireland, very few people have died. And in Great Britain, thousands have died. Portugal is right next door to France, Spain, Italy. Portugal has a very low death rate. Because Portugal is the only country there which has a strong BCD vaccination program. France doesn't have it, Italy doesn't have it, Spain doesn't have it. Here's something interesting about Germany. You know, Germany got united between East and West Germany sometime in the 80s. Do you know something? That before they became one country, East Germany used to have a strong BCD vaccination program. Even though overall in Germany the deaths are very low, East Germany has lower deaths than West Germany. And the reason probably is because their BCD vaccination program was strong. So a large part of the population has had BCD vaccination. Even Australia, the deaths are really low. Australia has a BCD vaccination program. Malaysia has a BCD vaccination program. Its deaths are low. India 
in 1971 made bcg vaccination compulsory for everyone every newborn child had to have the bcg shot so imagine anyone who is less than 50 years of age and has been born in india has had the bcg shot so there is a strong chance that all those people are well protected this is not a 100% foolproof thing but the probability of catching a virus if you have the bcg shot is almost zero almost it's not zero it's very low and one more thing i checked randomly i checked with banaras i checked with elderly people in patna and i know people who are 80 years old and have had the bcg vaccination many years ago because they wanted to protect themselves against tuberculosis so do you see that that this bcg thing looks like a good thing for india there's one more thing i want to tell you after the four scientists at houston had done this simple experiments of looking at data two scientists at chandigarh at the post graduate medical institute in chandigarh they did one more experiment they looked at all those countries that not only had a bcg program but also had a bcg revaccination program that means they would revaccinate the population after a while over there the death rates are even lower so it looks like the bcg program has helped countries fight off the virus and that i think is a significant reason in addition to the lockdown that has helped india face this virus with little damage there are other things we should look at look at the case of dharavi dharavi is a densely populated locality it is a slum area i think many 8 9 lakh people live in a small congested area they have common toilets and many people live inside one small room so on and so forth if this virus had this high infection rate dharavi's first infection happened more than a month ago and two days ago when i checked the data dharavi had had only 140 infections infections not deaths you can see that in lakhs of people in one month also the virus has caused almost no damage this is similar to the diamond princess case so there is something happening in india that is helping us keep the virus in check one second i repeat this does not mean that we should not observe lockdown this does not mean that we should start going out and start hugging people we must maintain social distance and i'll tell you why even if you get infected india has low death rates but let's not take a chance and get infected needlessly why create trouble so keeping a little bit of a distance for some more time will help india there are other things i want you to understand gyanatosh i want your colleagues to understand and i want your students to start looking at this this business of understanding data it is extremely useful you know i will make a prediction about india at the end of my talk but before that i want you to understand why data plays such a critical role and i always believe that the more data you accumulate more scientifically accumulated data gives you a better idea of reality of the truth so let me tell you something on march 31 i made a prediction that the united states will start now having lesser and lesser cases of infection march 31 when many were dying but i said the number of infections will now start coming down that wasn't me there was something else happening there is a company in the usa that makes smart thermometers that company is called insa the company is a startup that has been founded by an indian i think his name is inder singh he lives in san francisco on march 31 i read that kinsta had already sold in the united states more than 10 lakh thermometers these are smart thermometers you they don't have to touch the body you have to just place it in front of your face and within a fraction of a second with 99% accuracy it will measure your thermometer and these are smart thermometers so they are all connected to a central server where kinsta has every time a person takes his or her temperature through this smart thermometer it gets registered instantly instantly in that server without your name just where you are physically located 
and what is your temperature. Kinsa had used this thermometer to great effect last year when the flu season started in the USA. Each year in September, USA begins to experience the influenza season where a lot of people contract the influenza virus. And many, many people take shots to protect themselves against the influenza virus. Incidentally, this year, the season lasts from September till about February. And the estimates in the US, there is no, as I said, you can't tell a person is right only because of this or only because of that disease. There can be all kinds of reasons, but the estimates for people who die annually from the flu in the US vary between 20,000 to 50,000. You see that each year and no one seems to become, you know, paranoid about the flu. They say that if almost 50,000 could have died this year in the US because of the flu, in spite of the vaccine they've taken, yet nobody went berserk. The coronavirus, when I last checked, the US 53,000 people had died. But everybody's become paranoid because the media plays it up in such a negative way. So the point I'm trying to emphasize is we must become a little more stable, a little more focused in analyzing true data. But let's get back to the Kinsa story. So during the flu season from September to February, Kinsa noted on its server that temperatures, individual body temperatures on the average were much higher in the US. And in February, they started coming down. So they realized that the flu season is over. During the flu, everybody takes their temperature all the time. Then suddenly, again, towards the end of February, the temperature started going up. And that's the time in the US, the virus was spreading everywhere. And as luck would have it, in the last week of March, Kinsa observed that all across the US, all across the US, body temperatures were coming back to normal. So they made a very educated guess on March 31, after one week of data, that it looks like the infections are falling in the US. And that's when I made a prediction that the US is beginning to turn the tide. And sure enough, after one week of April, New York governor said that our hospitals are no longer experiencing that rush that they had experienced in March. So the effect had happened. This is how technology and data come to your aid to at least understand and even make predictions. And I want your students and your faculty to start thinking along these lines, Gyanatosh. These are not terribly, terribly difficult ideas. You require some good programming. You require some simple hardware. My humble request to you is, Gantosh, collect some funds, set up an innovation center, set up an engineering kitchen, and allow your students to experiment with various ideas, with good IT, with good thinking, with good data analysis, and with good life sciences, good statistics. You will be able to do many things. There's something else I want you to understand about data. Amazing. It's really amazing. You know, there is a company in the US, it's called Benevolent AI. AI stands for Artificial Intelligence. It's an amazing company. That company has really powerful computers at its disposal, extraordinarily powerful computers. And do you know, their job is to produce drugs for various diseases. And they've had successes in the past also. What did they do with the coronavirus? When the virus was identified and its DNA was completely known, then all they did was they modeled this molecule on their high-speed, high-powerful computers. And then what they do is they look at all existing data on all existing chemical formulations, compounds. And through various simulations, they look at all the data of all the compounds they try and see which one will fit in a fight against the virus through the computer, through artificial intelligence. And you know what did they find? That there is a drug, I forget its exact name, it's not hydroxychloroquine, don't get me wrong, it's another drug. But they found that this drug has the best chances of fighting the virus and it took them only 24 hours. That's the power of computer technology that they had at their disposal. So trials in the US have already begun with the drug. 
Then there are other things that happen. I'm sure all of your colleagues have heard of Robert Gallo. He is the co-discoverer of the AIDS virus. Robert Gallo was one of the people who discovered the AIDS virus. Before that, people didn't even know what was causing AIDS. In March, Gallo came across a research paper written in the Russian language, published in a Russian journal. See, this is what happens when we are curious and we try and look for things. The paper was buried since 1990. So for these 30 years, no one had looked at the paper. He just happened to be alert and he came across the paper. It was written by, I think, a husband-wife couple. They were life scientists. A virus of the similar nature as the coronavirus had occurred in some part of Russia then in 1990. And you know what that couple had done? They had used the polio vaccine to fight the virus with great success. That data was recorded in their paper and Gallo came across that. So Gallo has made a proposal to the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration in the US, to test the polio vaccine against the virus. As far as I know, he has already been given permission to conduct trials, as far as I know. India, as you know, is polio free because every child in India, after he or she is born, is given the polio vaccine. So my guess is that even that is giving us some immunity. All this data comes in handy when it comes to India, I realize that we have been fortunate. Here's another mystery. Some time back, I came across this map of the countries of the world that have been affected badly by the coronavirus and those countries where the deaths are low. And you know, those two countries are disjoint, those that have high deaths and those that have low deaths. And it so happens that almost every country that has low deaths has a high incidence of malaria. Nobody can explain this, but it seems to be that there is a kind of inverse relationship. If a country has high malaria, it has low corona. If it has high corona, it has low malaria. So India has an endemic malaria all the time. So that also seems to be going in our favor. And you know, Gyanutosh, just two more things. First, some more information that should make us feel better in India. There are many smart minds all across the world, some of the best minds using the best technologies that are working on creating a vaccine. The US itself, which is so powerful in technology, in the life sciences, it has some of the best Nobel laureates and their groups working on these things. They are also working on many vaccines. But there are two vaccines that are being developed in the United Kingdom. One from my former college, Imperial College, which is a very promising vaccine. And one at the University of Oxford, that is even more promising. The Oxford vaccine is already conducting human trials. And if things go right, and as I have understood, I've spoken to people in the United Kingdom uh, last few days, the vaccine has a very strong chance of success. So the United Kingdom government has given them more than 20 million pounds to quickly develop the vaccine. And they are likely to start putting out the vaccine in the market in September. And the chances of the vaccine being effective are very, very strong. Here's what India has to gain from this. There is a company in Pune, it's called the Serum Institute of India. This private company has been given by the Oxford group, by the University of Oxford researchers, permission to manufacture the vaccine in parallel in India. So if things work out and if the vaccine becomes a success, you will find that India will have access to the vaccine by September, latest by October, we will be able to use the vaccine. Indian science is also working in many other ways. On the University of Delhi campus, the CSIR has a lab, the IGB Institute. As I have learned only two days ago, the IGB scientists have developed a very accurate test, which takes about one hour and has 99% accuracy to tell you whether you have the coronavirus or not. It's a simple test. They're working to reduce the time to 30 minutes. Once this test is out, what the government will do, uh, this is my guess, use this, and the test is not very expensive. So they will use the test to test small, special, more likely to be infected groups of populations 
to randomly check where the virus is spreading and where it is not spreading. That is also good news for India. So overall, things are under control. But here's something that I want every one of you to look at. You know, there is a scientist in Israel. Again, he has done this using data that is available on the web. He is a chairman of the Space Research Organization of Israel. And you know, what did he do? He looked at the data of all the countries that have had the coronavirus. And he looked at it very carefully. From the time that between 5 to 10 deaths occur in a country, he calculated the time period when the virus begins to die out. Whether you have a lockdown or not, whether you practice social distancing or not, whether you mix with people or not, he has realized that the virus more or less dies out after eight weeks. Of course, again, he has observed that those countries that do not observe lockdown and do not observe social distancing, there will be more deaths. But in that case also, the virus dies out in about eight weeks. So my prediction for India is that the eight weeks will happen around the middle of May. And I think India will be free from the virus mostly by that time. So I thought I would end on that happy note, Gyanathosh. And I'm happy to take any questions or if you want to have any discussions, I'll be happy to do that with you. So I leave it to you now to take this forward. Any questions, please? You can unmute yourself. One by one, otherwise there'll be cacophony. Yeah. You can raise your hand. I request you to type your questions in the chat box and then you you can unmute yourself. Okay. You know, Gyantosh, I think your faculty can perform this experiment when today or day after or whenever. That within their own social circle of friends across India, in a confidential manner, so no names should be given, just data. They should record data of how many cases do they know of the coronavirus through personal knowledge. Not through the newspaper, not through TV, not through the website. Through your personal circle. And how many people are there in your circle. And if about 50 of your faculty collect this data, you'll have a very good idea of what is happening in India with respect to the coronavirus. Uh, I have a question. Uh, please, please identify yourself. Sir, uh, good morning. I am Dr. Rajiv Singh from Chemistry Department. Hi, Rajiv. Uh, hello, sir. First, I would like to appreciate your talk uh, that you had given a few days back at uh, the Vigyan Bharati. And uh, it was very informative. Second, my question is that you were mentioning about artificial intelligence and its role. Yeah. So currently, uh, I have was reading some news which said that the brain of the monkeys is being modified using artificial intelligence and everything, you know. So it sounds much similar to the movies like uh, we had an ape movie recently. So do you think if we, uh, when we are using this artificial intelligence in a negative way, so is this a negative way or a positive way like modifying the brain of a monkey? So it can go. It can go anyway. So is it a positive method or a negative method? So Rajiv, I'm not familiar with this news that you told me. When you say modify, I have no idea what they have really done. I so they have modified the DNA uh, for some part of DNA of the uh, brain of the monkey. In the China, they have done it. It was a recent news, like a week back. Okay. Well, if you ask me, you know, my own views are a little cautious when it comes to dealing with animals, I don't know, they also have some rights and I'm always hesitant about it. I'm not in a position to comment on this. Artificial intelligence doesn't necessarily mean messing around with the biological brain. Artificial intelligence is just enhancing computing power mm -hmm. so that we can handle data at super fast speeds and connect and find correlations and then make decisions or inferences. That's what I really mean by artificial intelligence. That's the purpose of my emphasis on artificial intelligence. And with the advent of quantum computing, artificial intelligence will reach enormous heights. 
and I'm sure India should get, will be getting into the race itself. Colleges like yours should start thinking about bringing these things into the curriculum. Right. Thank you so much, sir. I have shared the link of that news in the message section. Thank okay. you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I invite Dr. Anjali Sharma. She wants to ask some questions. She's from the physics department. Anjali, please unmute yourself. Uh, her question is, sir, what about those cases where virus doesn't show any symptoms? What about them? Let's be happy. <laughs> 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 I am sure that there are lots and lots of asymptomatic cases. Even in the United States, there are thousands of asymptomatic cases. That means that means that people got the virus but did not have any symptoms. It just goes to show that this is not as deadly a virus as people think. Do you know, as of today, the probability of someone dying of a road accident in India is at least... I would say more than 15 times higher than dying by the coronavirus. More than 15 times. In fact, maybe 30 times. That's the probability of dying in a road accident in India. But because the media doesn't play that up, we don't worry about the road accidents. And the media plays a virus, 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 and everybody gets worried. So fear should not, you know, fear is the key. Keep the fear away. That doesn't mean you have to be foolish. Let me keep emphasizing. Don't go and embrace people. But don't be afraid of this virus. Jo man se har jata hai, wo har cheez se har jata hai. Mujhe nahi malum, aap log data kitna study karte ho. You know, how many, I would just give this as homework to you. Just check how many people die of tuberculosis in India on a daily basis. Aap, you will be staggeringly surprised. Magar koi TV se nahi dar raha India. Itne zyada log ma jate hai. Us kubo media shor nahi ma cha raha. So think about all these things. Now there is a question from Dr. Subhash Mahopatra. He's from the chemistry department. Uh, can you unmute yourself, Subhash? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Sir? Yes. Sir, very, sir, very uh, good morning. Morning. It is very informative. So nowadays, uh, there is information about virus is changing shape. So okay. L and S. Virus mutating. Yes, changing shape. Changing its shape. Yeah. That's, that's called mutation. That's called mutation. Oh, yes, sir. Mutation. L and S. I, so, I, I was talking to one of India's foremost life scientists just two days ago. He has been a frontline researcher on many of these issues. We have no evidence, uh, Subhash. There is not even he doesn't have evidence. But both of us were making a, a guess. This is just a guess, okay? So please don't take this as a scientific fact. But so I, my I asked him that if the virus enters a body, the body doesn't sit passively. A human body produces antibodies that start attacking the virus. Then the virus goes to another body. The other bodies, antibodies also start attacking the virus. And this happens every time the virus jumps from one body to another, the other body, new bodies, antibodies start attacking the virus. Does this not harm the virus, weaken it in some way? That is my intuitive layperson's feeling. I'm no scientist and I'm not stating this as a fact. Be clear about it. But even this great life scientist said, he has a, the virus becomes weaker and weaker as it moves from body to body. So that may be what you think is maybe some kind of mutation happening, but there is no proof. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? You can write in the chat yeah. box or unmute yourself. Dinita, uh, I have to ask one question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, yeah. there is a question on uh, Facebook Live, question from Mr. Pankaj Arola. Yes. Sir, are you? Uh, I am audible, sir. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. His question is: Is vaccination and social distancing is the only way to get out from this worst situation, or, sir, you can guide anything else to all over India to get out of this coronavirus? Well, as I as I seem to think, and many great people, much wiser than I am, are also suggesting. 
that by the middle of May, if we observe this lockdown, if we create this social distancing, the virus will begin to lose speed. It will start reducing. And India will then begin to get out of it. But as I have understood, the government will relax lockdown in very phased and careful ways. So we can't just say, okay, lockdown is over and everybody should start mixing. They will open up those areas which are free from the virus. Incidentally, I, as far as I know, more than 30 districts are free from the virus. So there is no need now, I think, for the government to necessarily impose a lockdown in those districts. And gradually, say, for instance, the city of Delhi. There are some areas that have an incidence of the virus. The other areas are comparatively free. My guess is, I'm making a guess, I could be wrong, but the government will create a lockdown just for that area and allow other areas to be away from that and then be opened up a little bit. So that is the phased manner in which the country will open up. Even if we have a vaccine, even if we have good tests, it is always necessary to be a little cautious because you never know, this virus is not fully understood. When we say data says it will finish in eight weeks, there is no law, there is no God's law that says the virus has to finish in eight weeks. That is just a probability, that's all. Uh, sir, there is a question from Dr. Ashutosh Vishwabandhu. He is from the physics department. Can you unmute yourself, Ashutosh? Ashutosh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Good morning, sir. I'm Ashutosh, Ashutosh from physics department. Hi, Ashutosh. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on herd immunity? And uh, I heard that Sweden is following this uh, uh, strategy of herd immunity. Right. And uh, so what are your thoughts on that? And uh, thank you well, for this. That is one way forward. And you yeah. know, whether we like it or not, let me just give you an example, Ashutosh. You must have read of all those migrants who came from Punjab or Rajasthan and lakhs of them, and they assembled in Delhi. Yes, sir. And they were mixing freely. Now, I don't know, but suppose for the sake of argument, some of them were carrying the coronavirus, even though they did not have symptoms, because I did not know of any migrants showing symptoms of the virus, but they may be carrying. Now, what in this close situation, when they're all together, the virus must have jumped from one body to the other. And because they did not show too many symptoms, it looks like those bodies fought the virus, developed immunity, and because there were lacks of them, the probability is that there may have been herd immunity in those groups. Because from whatever data that I've observed, the migrants apparently are not carrying the virus. There is no outbreak of the virus in groups of migrants. So either they have herd immunity already through some miraculous thing, or because they have the BCD vaccine, it's very hard to say. But herd immunity is one way. That's what Britain wanted to do in the beginning. In the beginning, the British government said, we'll just allow herd immunity to happen. But then they realized that the numbers of people who will be infected will become very large. Sweden has very good facilities, hospitalization facilities, very good facilities for you know, extra medical care, for all kinds of you know, intensive medical care beds, so on and so forth. So Sweden was in a better position to quickly give good medical help to their citizens. That's why they could afford to go for herd immunity. Britain was not that well off from that point of view. So they just dropped the herd immunity idea immediately. So for, for a country like India, that, that will not be possible? Uh, uh... Not be possible, we shouldn't try. But my guess is, you know, Ashutosh, because like Dharavi, I mean, you cannot keep people away from people in Dharavi. If some yeah. people have got the virus and many haven't, then I, my guess is they've all developed immunity already. So it's happening. That is my guess. I could be wrong. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, there is a question from Dr. Snehlata from the chemistry department. Can you unmute yourself? Uh, she wants to ask that uh, does temperature also play a role? Well, like any body infection, when the body gets an infection, particularly a virus infection, then body temperature rises. And I heard this lady who is one of the chief uh, virologists who sits with Donald Trump during his press conferences, Burks, Dr. Burks, where she said that when the body temperature rises to a certain level, then that is good 
for the body because then the body is able to fight the virus at higher temperatures and those higher temperatures are not good for the virus. The danger is that sometimes the body's immune response overreacts and your temperature shoots up and then it begins to cause harm to the body. Otherwise, a certain amount of temperature is always good in fighting the virus. Thank you, sir. Now, there is a question from Mr. Ajit Kumar. He is from the uh, history department. Ajit, can you unmute yourself? Hello. 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 We can, yes, we can yes, hear you. Can hear you. Oh. Good morning, sir. And thank you for your uh, informative talk, sir. You compared uh, the global, uh, on the global level with India. Uh, but uh, I have two questions. One, uh, is that uh, data which you are uh, saying us to look after, uh, is that data is correct? Whether there is a fuzzing of data because we, heard, we are hearing lots of uh, data is being fuzzed these days. Where? Where is the data being fuzzed? Where? Uh, 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 by uh, private companies or uh, uh, even the government uh, uh, data was not accurate or they are not giving the accurate data uh, on several are you, accounts. Are you talking of India or some other country? Uh, I am uh, talking about the global uh, uh, phenomena, sir. I have, uh, had no the evidence, uh, I have had no evidence of data being fudged in any country. Some people kept saying China has fudged data, China has fudged data, but no one has produced any evidence. You know, these are just talks in the air. As far okay. as other countries are concerned, I haven't heard of a single country where they say data is being fudged. The data for France, Iran, Italy, Spain, Portugal, United States, Ireland, Great Britain, they are perfectly accurate data. Perfectly okay. accurate. Second question is that, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, you talked about that India's population is uh, our youngest and that is why here uh, uh, Corona effect is not that much as... Uh, uh, I didn't so, say that so, is why. I said the chances of India being affected are much less. Yes, sir. So, is that... Uh, 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 thing uh, uh, not happen due to the immunity in the tropic, uh, tropical climate or something else? Sir. No, no, no. So let me explain this. Young people may also get infected. It's not that young people don't get infected. But I looked at the data in all the other countries, USA, Great Britain, France, Italy, Spain, Iran. Young, there are more young people who get infected than old people. But the young people do not get badly infected. They recover. People who are above 80 tend to be more badly affected. But you know, when you're above 80, there is a chance that you will be suffering from heart trouble or lung trouble or diabetes or something like that. So there is no clear thing that the virus comes and kills someone just like that if he's normal. I know of a 103-year-old woman in Europe who got the virus and recovered because she had no other problems. So the virus by itself is not so bad. I mean, people should not have this paranoia about the virus. Keep your immunity strong, eat the right foods, get reasonable exercise within the confines of your home or your compound, you know, be positive in your mind and you know, most likely nothing will happen. Uh, sir, there is a question from Dr. Preeti Jain of the Mathematics Department. Uh, can you unmute yourself, Preeti? Uh, good morning, sir. Hi, Preeti. Can you hear me? Yes, I yeah, can. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, good morning, sir. I want to ask you ki, uh, what measures we should adopt where, once the lockdown is over. You know, one thing I would say, everyone should wear a mask when they go out. Even if it is a homemade mask. The better the quality of the mask, the better, safer you will be. But please make it a rule to always wear a mask when you go out. That's the one thing we should do. Two, don't needlessly mix with people. Don't be careless. Always try and keep a distance. Everyone will understand. It is not a question of, you know, some kind of social stigma. We just have to keep a distance unless it is absolutely necessary. Don't do that. And three, always carry a small bottle of sanitizer with you. And at the drop of a hat, whenever you feel you've touched something, quickly disinfect your hand. If you can wash it with soap, do that. If you adopt these measures and don't needlessly just go out just for the heck of it, then I think things should be okay. 
Thank you, sir. Sir, Thank there, you is very a much, sir. there is a question from Dr. Sayed Mubin Zera from the history department. Uh, can you unmute yourself, Mubin? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Please ask. The informative just uh, uh, I think there is a. I'll say the question, sir. Uh, sir, do we foresee a new world order in terms? Question is that. Mera question ye hai, sir, ki kya, uh, kya hum ek naya world order dekh rahe hai, or this is in perspective or perspective, the question is specifically in perspective of uh, as academicians. Um, do we foresee more uh, inter-country research, more inter-country connections related to academics? So, ek academician hone ke naate, kyunki aapne baat achche se ek statistical understanding bhi di hai, jo hum sab kar sakte hai as academicians. So, what is our major responsibility? That's what uh, I would want to know. In foreseeing a new kind of... Yes, so forcing the new kind of system that is uh, coming across. I have a lake written coronavirus. And I have said that there is a silver lining to the coronavirus cloud. What is that silver lining? In the context of us who are in the teaching and education sector, that many people have started taking advantage of technology. I don't want to say that technology will replace any one of us. No, it is a great assistant. We can use this to great advantage. And I'm sure many of you have already used it in some way or the other in connecting with your students. I gave a webinar about two weeks ago on unleashing the power of the web as a knowledge device. And I'll try and send the link to Gyanatosh of that webinar. And it just tries to explain with practical ideas on how we can use the internet, the web, a computer, and such things to aid good teaching. And I think earlier people are always very reluctant. Are nahi ye hoga nahi, kaise karenge, bache nahi samjhenge. Face to face bahut achhi cheez hai. Ab logon ko majburan karna pada hai. To uske lab bhi dikh rahenge. Or thoda anubhav ho jayega, thoda prayas karenge, koshish karenge. To isme se kuch khubsurat baate, kuch achhi cheezen niklenge. To mera kehna hai ki as academics, all of us should start using this a little bit to advantage iske bade faide. Sir, a question mera hai. Haan gyan to. मैंने सर हम सब ने आपको गांधी के बारे में विभिन्न विषयों पर बोलते हुए कई बार सुना है और मुझे लगता है कि जब भारत में प्लेग आया या और और बहुत सारी महामारियां आईं और गांधी उस समय उन महामारियों से लड़ने के लिए कैसे लोगों को उत्प्रेरित कर रहे थे जबकि हमारे पास संसाधन और सुविधाएं और चिकित्सा की सुविधाएं बहुत कम थी तो एक गांधीयन के रूप में एक गांधीवादी के रूप में आपका क्या सुझाव होगा कि इस कोरोना वायरस को आज के समय में कैसे डील किया जाए किस मेथड से और एक गांधीयन मेथड से या किसी अन्य मेथड से पहली चीज तो ज्ञानतोष मैं सिद्ध कर दूं कि भाई मैं कोई गांधीवादी नहीं हूं मेरे अंदर तो इतने दोष हैं कि मैं इस तरह की हिमाकत कर ही नहीं सकता हां गांधी जी को मैं आदर्श जरूर मानता हूं और उनसे सीखने की हम सब पूरी कोशिश करते ही रहते हैं गांधी जी ने बड़े अच्छे अपने देखिए गांधी हवा में नहीं बात करते थे ये जिस तरह मैं ये भाषण दे रहा हूं आप पूछ सकते हैं कि आप कितना फील्ड में गए हैं डेटा लेने तो हम तो कुछ नहीं गए हैं पर गांधी जी ऐसे नहीं थे गांधी जी जो कहते थे वो करते थे जो करते थे वो कहते थे प्लेग के संबंध में गांतोष तुमने बड़ी अच्छी बात उठा दी जब वो दक्षिण अफ्रीका में थे और उस समय उनकी आयु 35 37 कुछ थी उस समय जोहानिसबर्ग में प्लेग आ गया था और उसका प्रकोप बड़ा भारी था विशेष रूप से जहां भारतवासी रह रहे थे वहां उसका प्रकोप बहुत ही भीषण था और वहां जाने से सब लोग हिचकिचा रहे थे 
तो गांधी जी को जैसे ही खबर लगी उन्होंने कहा कि मैं वहां जाऊंगा सेवा करने कुछ वहां पर सुधार लाने उस जमाने में प्लेग का कोई इलाज नहीं था तो गांधी जी के साथ कई लोग थे उन्होंने कहा सहयोगी थे उन्होंने कहा हम भी आपके साथ चलेंगे तो गांधी ने कहा मैं उन्हीं को आने दूंगा जिसका कोई परिवार आगे पीछे ना हो क्योंकि यहाँ जाएंगे तो पता नहीं किसको क्या हो जाए कोई लौट के आए ना आए मैं किसी को खतरा नहीं मोल लेने पहला सबक ज्ञानोतोष कि गांधी के चार बच्चे थे पत्नी थी सबको छोड़ के जा रहा था वो आदमी दिलेरी देखो सेवा भावना देखो औरों को नहीं जाने दे रहा कह रहा वही चल पाएंगे जिनके आसपास कोई परिवार ना हो कोई सगे संबंधी ना हो दुनिया में नहीं तो उनको भारी पड़ेगा अकेले चला गया उनको लेकर साथ में एक अंग्रेज नर्स भी गई थी जब वो लोग वहां गए तो बहुत बुरा हाल था गांधी जी ने एक घर पूरा खुलवाया लोग भाग गए थे घर छोड़कर गंदा सा पड़ा था उसको साफ किया अपने हाथों से वहां मरीजों को लाए जो मरने वाले थे उनकी सेवा करने लगे पट्टी लगाना पानी से ठंडा करना वगैरह वगैरह अब तुम देख रहे हो जानता है ये आदमी की ये बहुत ही छूत की बीमारी है इसमें कब क्या हो जाए चार बच्चे हैं छोटे छोटे पत्नी है जवान छोड़ के आया है क्या दिखा सेवा भावना इतनी गांधी जी के अंदर सेवा भावना इतने प्रबल रूप से समाई हुई थी कि वो हमेशा ऐसे ही करते थे और वो जो अंग्रेज नर्स कही थी उसको प्लेग हो गया और उसका निधन हो गया शी शी लॉस्ट एर लाइफ तो ये नहीं है कि गांधी खतरा नहीं बोल रही थे और वहां तमाम लोगों की सेवा की उन्होंने सरकार का ध्यान आकर्षित किया बहुत सुधार ले आए उसी प्रकार हिंदुस्तान में हुआ था प्लेग सूरत में और बंदर में अहमदाबाद में घर घर में घुस के गांधी सरदार पटेल इन लोगों ने जा जाकर लोगों को कैसे सफाई से रहना है किस प्रकार के ख्याल रखना है ये सब जाकर निर्भीक रूप से निडर रूप से सिखाया था न सरदार पटेल डरे न महात्मा गांधी डरे यह एक मिसाल है हमारे लिए जानते थे वो लोग की उनको प्लेग हो सकता है फिर भी वो घर घर गए थे घर में घुस घुस के गांधी ने कैसे बाथरूम को साफ रखना है वो भी सिखाया था ये बहुत कुछ सीखने वाली बात है यहाँ तक छुआछूत की बात है ज्ञानतोष गांधी जी ने एक बहुत जाने माने पंडित थे बहुत ही जाने माने स्कॉलर जिसको कहते हैं विद्वान एकदम परचूरे शास्त्री उनको लेप्रेसी हो गई लेप्रेसी भी छुआछूत की बीमारी हो गई उनके घर वालों ने उनको घर से निकाल दिया गांधी जी को पता चला वो परचूरे शास्त्री को अपने आश्रम में वर्धा में ले आए और अपने पास रखा और रोज सवेरे अपने हाथों से गांधी जी उनकी मालिश करते थे देख रहे हो यहाँ इतना डर लोगों को रहता है कि कोड़ी कहीं दिख जाता है तो उसको पत्थर मार के भगाते हैं या दूर चले जाते हैं इतिहास यही सिखा रहा हमको और ये गांधी था जो आश्रम में ले आया और रोज उनकी मालिश करता था अपने हाथ से तो बहुत कुछ सीखने को है गांधी जी से बहुत कुछ सर देर इज अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम डॉक्टर अनामिका प्रसाद फ्रॉम द पॉलिटिकल साइंस डिपार्टमेंट अनामिका कैन यू अनम्यूट योर सर आई हैव हेलो कैन यू हियर मी यस या या वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग सर थैंक यू फॉर द इंफॉर्मेटिव लेक्चर Uh, I just uh, being a positive person, but I just have a small query that how far is the criticism of Indian government's conservative testing strategy justified? देखो मैं एक चीज बता रहा हूँ criticism करने के लिए तो हम हर चीज में criticism कर सकते हैं ये वक्त criticism का नहीं होना चाहिए constructive सुझाव का होना चाहिए एक चीज मैं बताना चाहता हूँ अनामिका जी कि मैंने आंकड़े देखे हैं इन्फेक्शन कितने दिनों में डबल हो रहा है नंबर ऑफ पीपल गेटिंग इन्फेक्टेड जैसे मान लो आज 100 लोग इन्फेक्टेड हैं कितने दिनों बाद 200 होंगे उसके कितने दिनों बाद 400 होंगे मैं वो देख रहा हूं न्यूयॉर्क में इन्फेक्शन रेट डबल हो रहा था तीन दिन में दो दिन तीन दिन के बीच में तीन दिन में उसी में उसकी हालत खराब हो गई भारत में आरंभ से ही हमारा इंफेक्शन रेट पांच दिन पे डबल हो रहा था बहुत ही स्लो है ग्रोथ और अब दस दिन हो गया है न्यूयॉर्क में जब पांच दिन पे इंफेक्शन रेट पहुंचा तो उनको राहत मिलने लगी तो तुम इसी से समझ लो कि भारत में ठीक हो रहा है 
इसको लेकर ज्यादा परेशान मत हो ये टेस्ट करने से तो और लोग गुमराह हो रहे हैं क्योंकि टेस्ट में कभी पॉजिटिव दिखाता है कभी नेगेटिव दिखाता है अरे इतने समटाइम्स यू नो टू मच नॉलेज इज आल्सो नॉट गुड अगर सिम्टम नहीं है तो मस्त रहो और सिम्टम है तो अपना इलाज करो इतने है अच्छा है मैं ये नहीं कह रहा कि इसका मतलब सरकार हाथ उठा दे और करे वो कर भी नहीं रही है दिस इज अ टाइम टू बी कंस्ट्रक्टिव एंड आई थिंक इंडिया इज डूइंग ऑल राइट थैंक यू सर Sir, how much time more do we have? I have got a couple of questions. Okay, I'll take two more questions. Okay, sir. Uh, this is from uh, Dr. Raghavendra Pandey from the Physics Department. Uh, he's saying, uh, "What will be the social change expected after the Corona era?" Ah, uh, you know, uh, so Raghavendra, what you know, what I will tell you. Take a look at the Spanish flu. Or, आप देखिए कितने लोग मरे थे उसमें तो असंख्य लोग मर गए थे. आपको लगता है कि सोशल चेंज कुछ आया लोग डरे फिर दुनिया फिर नॉर्मल हो गई कुछ दिनों बाद और यहाँ भी ऐसा ही होगा कुछ दिन इसका प्रकोप दिमाग में बैठा रहेगा लोग थोड़ा सा घबराएंगे ट्रैवल कम करेंगे और ट्रैवल में रिस्ट्रिक्शंस आ जाएंगे अगर टेस्ट जल्दी से आ जाता है और एक्यूरेट टेस्ट आता है जो आधे आधे घंटे में बता दे तो एयरलाइंस ट्रेन ट्रेवल इसमें हम मेरा अंदाज है लोग टेस्ट करा के ही बैठ पाएंगे जैसा कि जब 9/11 हुआ न्यूयॉर्क में उसके बाद एयरलाइन ट्रेवल कितना कठिन हो गया आप लिक्विड नहीं ले जा सकते आपको एक्सरे कराना है अपना भी कराना है अपने बैगेज का भी कराना है वगैरह तो ये चीजें आएंगी और काफी दिन तक रहेंगी पर जैसे स्पेनिश फ्लू के बाद फिर समाज उसी तरह उतर आया रुका ट्रेवल कहीं इंटरनेशनल ट्रेवल रुका सब लोग आते जाते रहे ये सब फिर से शुरू हो जाएगा कुछ बदलाव जरूर आएगा लेकिन टेक्नोलॉजी के सहारे we will handle it faster and better than the world handled it during the time of the spanish flu thank you sir sir there is a question from uh, miss nidhi sharma from the english department can you unmute yourself nidhi uh thank you vinita ma'am good afternoon sir Hi. so your talk has uh, certainly given us a lot of hope and <laughs> taken away uh, taken us away from our corona blues so uh, my question was that uh, you know i was i wanted to know your thoughts uh, on uh, um, whether we would uh, ever be able to move to normalcy but that has already been answered since uh, in the previous question sir uh, maybe so you can uh, if you can suggest how um, how this pandemic has you know uh enabled us to ambivalently uh, make us review our lives so uh, so so what are your thoughts on it you know young logo mein maine ye discussion dekha hai uh, nidhi they are all talking yes. about you know how we have abused mother earth and i uh-huh. believe that ye ishwar ki taraf se hame ek chunauti di gayi hai unhone sanket bheja hai कि अगर तुम सुधरोगे नहीं तो इसी तरह तुम्हें इस ऐसे प्रकोप आ जाएंगे हमने इस धरती के साथ बड़े अत्याचार किए हैं और अगर हम इसको कहते हैं निसर्ग के साथ मदर नेचर के साथ इफ वी आर इफ वी कीप इंडल्जिंग दिस प्रैक्टिसेस वी विल हैव टू पे अवी प्राइस अभी तो कोरोना वायरस आया है और हमको थोड़ा सा इसका प्रकोप देखने को मिला You know there is another crisis looming on the horizon, or log usko ab bhool gaye. This crisis of environment and climate change. It is a major crisis. If the world, having seen the you know importance of this lockdown, I'm not saying we should stay in lockdown mode. But thoda ham log apni gati vidhiyon ko soch samajh kar ab fir se aram kare. Aisa na ho ki fir usi paristhiti mein chale jaye jab corona ke pehle thi. तो इसमें हमने लाभ देखा क्या लाभ देखा पूरे दुनिया में वातावरण पहले से कम दूषित हुआ है तो सबको दिख रहा है इसमें तो कोई रॉकेट साइंस की आवश्यकता नहीं है रात को सितारे दिख रहे हैं यही बहुत बड़ी बात है लेकिन गंगा जी में जैसे मुझे याद है मैं बनारस का रहने वाला हूं मेरी माँ का घर नदी के किनारे था माँ बताती थी कि बचपन में वो बराबर देखती थी गंगा जी में रिवर डॉल्फिन आती थी मैं गंगा जी में खूब तैर रहा हूँ खूब तैर रहा हूँ पानी तब भी बचपन में साफ रहता था रिवर डॉल्फिन मैंने नहीं देखी थी लेकिन तमाम और मछलियां दिखती थी पिछले कुछ सालों से तो कुछ नहीं दिखता हमें तो कुछ ही दिन पहले बनारस से खबर मिली कि रिवर डॉल्फिन फिर से आ गई है 
मैं तो उस दिन रो पड़ा मुझे माँ की याद आ गई कि वो दिन लौट रहे हैं एक प्रकार से माँ भी लौट रही है क्योंकि वो मेमोरीज वापस आ रही हैं तो हमें सोचना पड़ेगा क्या हम फिर से इन रिवर डॉल्फिन को भगा देंगे हम ये देश अभिशप्त रहेगा अगर ये अपनी नदियों को ठीक से नहीं संभाल पाएगा इसलिए हमें इन चीजों पे सोचना है और शिक्षा की संस्थाओं की तो प्रधान रूप से भूमिका इसमें रहती है उनका दायित्व है कि ये इस तरह से पाठ्यक्रम बनाए कि इन चुनौतियों के साथ जो नन्नी मुन्नी जान हमारे रूप में निष्ठा रख के आती है पढ़ने के लिए वो इससे उलझ सके कुछ नए रास्ते निकाले कुछ ऐसी चीज ले आए बदलाव की जिससे भला हो वरना हमें ईश्वर माफ नहीं करेगा Thank you, Thank sir. Sir, last question. Uh, uh, this is from Miss Sonia Chauhan on the Facebook. Sir, after full protection, doctors are getting affected with corona while dealing with uh, corona-affected patients. And uh, for us, by merely wearing a mask, gloves, and use of hand sanitizer, can we feel safe? Because again, as I told you, Ishwar na kare ki kabi kisi ke saath bura ho, but when i gave you the statistics of tb or the statistics of dying in a road accident i mean how do you know who will get killed in a road accident or will not get killed in a road accident ishwar na kare kabhi kisi ko aisa face karna pade parantu no one can give guarantees you can only reduce the probability by being cautious ab maine to kehna hai ki agar bahar jana avashyak nahi hai to mat jaiye avashyak hai to jitna precaution le sakte hain lijiye परंतु देखिए डॉक्टर्स जो इन्फेक्ट हो रहे हैं ऐसा भी नहीं कि हर डॉक्टर इन्फेक्ट हुआ है कुछ ही हुए हैं और वो क्यों हो रहे हैं उसके सब कारण हमें नहीं मालूम है मैं अनुमान लगा रहा हूं कि निरंतर बेचारे जब वो बहादुर डॉक्टर्स हैं दिन रात पेशेंट्स के साथ उलझ रहे हैं ट्रीट कर रहे हैं तो संभावनाएं बढ़ जाती है अगर आप सुबह शाम जैसा कि मैंने अमेरिका में देखा कि जो डॉक्टर्स इन्फेक्ट हुए उनकी जब मैंने देखा गतिविधियां क्या थी तो 24 में से 20 बीस घंटा वो लगे रहते थे पेशेंट्स को संभालने में हर पेशेंट को भीषण रूप से इन्फेक्शन हुआ था तो उनको वहां भी प्रोटेक्शन पूरी तरह नहीं मिल पाया लेकिन ऐसा नहीं कि हर डॉक्टर बीमार हुआ कुछ हुए और उसमें से भी अधिकांश रिकवर करके वापस आ गए तो ये भी नहीं है लेकिन हमारे जैसे जो आम आदमी है वो तो इस तरह नहीं फेस कर रहे ना वायरस को ये थोड़ा है कि वायरस इस वातावरण में है इस समय धूप इतनी तेज है कि वातावरण में वायरस का रहना मेरे लिए लगता है कि कठिन है तेज धूप है अल्ट्रावायलेट भी है हीट भी है और लोग कहते हैं ह्यूमिडिटी आती है तो भी वायरस मर जाता है तो ऐसा नहीं है कि बाहर वातावरण में मिलेगा लेकिन हमें कॉशस रहना चाहिए अपनी इम्यूनिटी बनाना चाहिए इम्यूनिटी बनाने के देखिए तीन चार सरल तरीके हैं नींद ठीक से ले चिंता न करें अपनी डायट अपना जो आहार है वो अच्छा रखें अच्छी चीजें खाएं जिससे इम्यूनिटी बढ़े और साथ में थोड़ी सी फिजिकल एक्सरसाइज करें और आपकी नेचुरल इम्यूनिटी अपने आप बढ़ जाए तो इन चीजों से ईश्वर रक्षा करेगा ऐसा मेरा कहना है थैंक यू सर फॉर दिस एनलाइटनिंग एंड इंफॉर्मेटिव सेशन एंड दिस इज रियली डीमिस्टिफाइड द करोना वायरस एंड होपफुली ऑल ऑफ अस विल बी एबल टू मेक मोस्ट ऑफ दिस सेशन and reduce our fear to a great extent especially people like me who are going into depression sir oh thanks God. a lot <laughs> oh, no. don't go into the this country will come out it ye bharat yeah. and bharat, it's a yeah ye bhagwan buddh bhagwan mahavir ki bhumi hai guru nanak ki hai kabir ji is ki nahi hai yakeen kijiye ye desh upar aayega bahar aa jayega really become paranoid sir, that when i go out i'll just get it aha <laughs> kuch nahi आप बन के रहिए मास्क पहनिए लोगों से थोड़ा दूरी रखिए कुछ नहीं होगा थैंक यू सर अंत अंत में में एक विनीता एक बात सबसे करना चाहता हूँ सर सबसे पहले तो हम सब लोग आपके आभारी हैं आपने समय दिया अपना और मैं एक बात सर अंत में ये जरूर कहना चाहूंगा कि आपने भारतीय आध्यात्म के साथ जो नई तकनीक है हमेशा शिक्षा पद्धति में इसके समन्वय की बात और वकालत की है आज की तारीख में जो बात आप कहा करते थे वो सच हो गया और लोग तकनीक का चाहे मजबूरी में ही इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं तो संपूर्ण भारत के शिक्षकों के लिए इस अवसर पर मैं दो शब्दों में या दो पंक्तियों में आपका एक संदेश चाहूंगा 
कि इस चुनौती को कैसे स्वीकार करें मैं आशावादी हूं ज्ञान तो आशावादी बने रहे लोग और यह ना भूलें कि यह पावन भूमि है यहाँ कुछ ईश्वर की विशेष रूप से कृपा रही है साथ में जिम्मेदारी से जीवन निभाएं तो यह प्रकोप से भारत बहुत जल्दी निकल आएगा ईश्वर के जितने संकेत मिल रहे हैं वो इशारे करता है हमारे ऊपर चुनौती है कि उसके इशारों को समझे डेटा भी उसके इशारे हैं हमारे लिए हम उसके तरफ अगर सजग रहेंगे तो समझ जाएंगे वो सारे इशारे ईश्वर के बता रहे कि भारत इस प्रकोप से जल्दी बाहर आ जाएगा तो आशावादी बने रहे ईश्वर में आस्था रखे भला होगा बाय बाय बहुत बहुत आभार सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू 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 थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vinika. Thank you, Ravinder. Wonderful talk. All less so gaya, bilkul without any disturbance. Yes. I was I was very afraid about my internet connection. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it but it, it went very well. Yes, it was very well. काफी दिनों बाद एक फेम में दिख रहा है सभी. Actually, recent 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 recent